there's a few paths to massive wealth in life, you know, when it comes to career paths. So if you're one of the younger guys watching this, I want you to listen up. If you're an older guy and you've got kids, pay attention because you can explain this to them as well. Number one, uh, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five. Six. Actually, there's six. I talked about five the other day, but there's actually six. Uh, number one is C-suite jobs, CEO, CTO, CFO, chief financial officer, chief executive officer, chief whatever officer. Okay. Uh, you need to have experience. You need to work your way up the ranks. There's very few of those jobs, uh, but if you can get one of them, very, very, very few. There's, there's, there's fewer of those jobs than there are many other opportunities, you know, for being honest that I'm about to talk about on this list. But if you can get there, it can be a well-paid thing. And if you're good at it, um, you'll be in demand. Like you can move from com company to company. And, you, you know, if you've done something to fix one organization, you can move over to fix another organization, whether it's running the business, whether it's, um, you know, dealing with the financials of the business. But C-suite jobs can pay you very well. Well into seven figures, you know, in fact, in some cases, eight figures, you know, depending on the size of the business that you're running. Um, a professional, licensed professional, uh, surgeon, doctor, lawyer, you go to school for a number of years, you get a piece of paper that you frame in mahogany and stick on your wall. You have the right to earn a uh, very hard, high rate. In some countries, it's more than others. Like in Canada, they, they don't pay doctors very well here. Um, you can be a, a world-class uh, surgeon here in Canada and probably make twice the money um, in the United States, you know, for example. So, but, uh, but a licensed professional that went to school with a specific de designation, professional designation can make decent income. Like even a, even a lawyer here that's, uh, working in house can easily make into six figures, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, next one would be STEM science, technology, engineering, and maths. I've had a number of, uh, consults with, um, guys in tech companies like tech leads of like facebook google um amazon's who else have i talked to an apple guy um android developers i've talked to a lot of guys in the tech world and you know whenever i get into my consults you know the private consults you know we always talk about income and some of these guys will be making seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year um just doing geeky shit for you know these tech companies um so that's another avenue to make some, you know, extreme wealth. But keep in mind when you're working in tech companies, you're going to be required to comply with the current thing. You know, you're going to have to hang a flag on your car and put uh, pronouns in your bio and all that sort of stuff. Um, and some people don't like that. Next one would be fame, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, some people like, you know, the attention and the fame, but um, you're an actor, you're a, a musician, you're even an influencer. Um, you guys saw what happened to Andrew Tate a few weeks ago, and he's been reduced to one platform now. Um, but if you say the wrong thing as a famous person or do the wrong thing in the public eye, they hold you accountable. The interesting thing is you don't have that same problem as an entrepreneur. I know a lot of entrepreneurs that make as much, if not more money than famous people. And you wouldn't even know them. Like if you saw them, you would not even know them. I was telling the story earlier this week. I had a buddy of mine that popped over because I had to uh, guarantee his uh, passport for him. Old, old friend. I've known him for close to 40 years now. We're just catching up what he'd been up to. And he's running this business right now. He's always been an entrepreneur for years. He's running this business right now where he's doing about a million bucks a day in sales receipts. But you wouldn't know it if you saw him. But there's famous people out there that got famous just from showing their tits and ass on Instagram or, you know, by holding out to the public, um, on social media platforms that they're, uh, famous men and, uh, making less money than him on a daily basis. Um, but there you go. Um, so fame's another one. So we've got C-suite jobs, licensed professionals, um, STEM type of careers in uh, tech fame. The next one is, uh, sales. And then there's one more after that. Um, sales would be high end sales though luxury real estate. Um, you sell a house for, uh, there's a listing right now that I looked at, uh, the other day, there's a nice neighborhood, 15 mil times 0 0.025. Your commission would be $375,000 on a 50 million piece of, uh, property, which is a lot more common than you think, especially in the greater Toronto area. Um, these guys usually have a team, 
it doesn't matter if it's high end real estate. I mean, if you're selling anything expensive, you're getting a commission for it. So if you're going to sell anything, if you're good at sales, don't do bullshit sales jobs. Don't sell, you know, Kias or something like that. Um, or, you know, limit yourself to a job where you're only going to make, you know, high five or six or low six figures, something like that. The ability to sell is something that's transferable in any field. The only difference between the guy that's selling private jets and the guy that's selling Kias is the guy that's selling private jets has a nicer suit. It's going to be custom tailored. He has a look, he has a style to him. Um, and he, and he believes that he has a capacity to sell private jets to people that are high income uh, folks. So yeah, if you're going to get into sales, don't sell bullshit things because the skill is transferable. It doesn't matter if it's a low ticket item or a high ticket item, you might as well use your skills to go to a higher ticket item. And the last, last one and not least, which is of course, you know, the reason for this cast today is entrepreneurship. The problem with entrepreneurship though, is that it's very risky. You guys have probably heard that the vast majority of businesses fail, right? Like nine times out of 10 within three to five years, you're out of business. The interesting stat that they never really talk about is the ones that survive out of, out of the nine that fail, the one you know, that survives the 10% of the businesses that, that survive 97% of the ones that survive are making less than a million dollars a year in annual sales receipts, which is a shit business to be in. So you've basically either been canned or you quit your job and you go and start up your own thing. You get through the three to five year, uh, you know, like a period of time of bullshit, basically, where most businesses collapse on themselves. And then you're continuing to run your business. But 97% of entrepreneurs that continue to run their business are not really making serious money. They're not making more than a million dollars a year in sales receipts. They're making less. They generally have uh, pretty significant overhead. And at the end of the day, most of them are basically in a position where they went and created a business to employ themselves, which is a really bad idea. You go and do something like that, you're now exposed to all kinds of risk. Uh, the employee can't be sued by something they do in a business, generally speaking. The employer, the uh, key holder, you know, is what they're generally called in the business world. The key holder is the one that can get sued. They can still pierce a corporate shield. A corporate shield is a nice thing to have. It offers a certain level of protection. There's other things that you can do, which I, of course, talk about in my course as well, too. But they can hold the key holder liable to any kind of damages that they might either experience in real life or they manufacture. A lot of the times, you know, especially in the U.S., there's a business model out there of litigation it could, because it can be profitable to, like, you know, chase lawsuits here and there, you know, over certain things. And generally speaking, they're mostly manufactured, if we're being honest. But why would you expose yourself to that risk when you could just be an employee and punch the clock and never get sued, never have to work on weekends, um, you know, never have to deal with all the headaches that come with being an entrepreneur? The the um, like the sexy guys out there, like the Elon Musk's of the world and the Jeff Bezos of the world and that sort of stuff, like those sexy type of entrepreneurs are very, very rare. Right. Like I said, about 97 percent of business owners make less than a million dollars a year. And then there's those a very, very small 3% that are making more than a million dollars a year in sales receipts that can grow into a billion dollar business. Uh, billion dollar businesses are very rare. Elon Musk is very rare. It's, it's, it's highly unlikely on a balance of probabilities that um, you can repeat that level of success. There's a lot of components that come into play with skills and luck and timing and all that sort of stuff. But the point that I'm making is that the vast majority of businesses never crack, crack a million dollars unless you understand the components of an elf business. So let me explain that to you. <clears throat> you guys can throw questions in the chat if you want. Just super chat them and they'll pop and I'll keep an eye over there and, and throw them out. And I am going to drop the link for you guys to come in and ask some questions. I mean, like, look, you guys have trusted me for years to unplug you on relationships and red pill you on that. Today, I'm going to red pill you on entrepreneurship and business. So pay very close attention here. So there's this podcast that I used to listen to. 2007 to nine, which I'll be honest, you know, partially, you know, con contributed to the hyper growth that I experienced in my debt business at the time, because one of the biggest problems that I had to solve was marketing, you know, getting the customers on board, because when people have debt, they're very comfortable with that. It's like the amount of people that are very comfortable with being in a physically unfit body is unbelievable to me to the same degree. There's a lot of people that are physically, or, sorry, uh, financially unfit. The biggest difference between financially unfit and physically 
unfit is you have to deal with that problem every time you get out of the shower and look in the mirror. You have to deal with that problem when you climb up the stairs and you're winded at the top of the stairs because your knees hurt and you're carrying too much body fat. You know that you have a problem. It's very difficult for you to ignore. When you have a debt problem, it's almost invisible unless you have to take out your card and pay for something and it doesn't work or you get in a fight with your um, wife or whatever over money problems. But for the most part, it's generally invisible to most people throughout the day. So for me, marketing the debt business was probably the hardest part of what I had to do. So I started to tune into things that could help me you know, solve those problems. And there's one po- this one podcast that I found called the I Love Marketing Podcast. And this guy, Joe Polish, ran it. And he had an interesting story. He was a dead broke carpet cleaner, wasn't making any money, had to figure out marketing, you know, and then he, one thing led to another, you know, a number of years later, and he became very successful and ran this podcast with this guy. And he created this notion of if you're going to run a business, there's two kinds of businesses that you can run. Elf, easy, lucrative, and fun. Half, hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating. So hat tip to Joe. Thank you for explaining that to me back in the day when I needed it. What I've done with this mindset course, and by the way, guys, the course is pinned in the top comment of the live chat. It's also in the description. Enrollment closes at midnight tonight. I don't know when I'm going to open it up again. I don't know what the cost will be. The cost will probably go up because I keep adding more and new material to it. So if you're interested, today's the day to get into it because, again, enrollment closes at midnight. So everything in this course is a mindset shift. Just like you have to shift your mindset when it comes to dealing with women and relationships and what they respond to. I am going to shift your mindset when it comes to entrepreneurship. The go-to for most people, I'm going to go and start up this business or that business, and it's a half business. It's something with a lot of employees, a lot of overhead, uh, thinner margins, big risk exposure. And I'm going to explain a lot of these points to you in a, a minute, where you don't make a lot of money, you're working long hours, and there's a lot of bullshit. Like I've said before that things like Amazon FBA, you know, for example, fulfilled by Amazon. And I have a 45 minute uh, webinar lecture on my course with my friend Bobby, who ran an Amazon FBA business. And he explains exactly why physical products and Amazon FBA is shit. But there are people that will make some money at it. They're very, very rare though, right? I had a guy message me earlier this week because I was talking about this before. He goes, you know, here's a screenshot. I made, um, let me see if I can find it actually. I made, um, you know, I get way too many DMs. I won't be able to find it. He goes, I made a million dollars over three days on sales. And here's a chart. And I said, awesome. Good for you. Make sure you tell people the amount of bullshit that you had to put up with to make that happen. And he's like, yeah, you're right. It's a very difficult business. The thing with a lot of these businesses that you hear about, like Amazon FBA, moving physical products, putting something on Shopify, some random trinket that you get off Alibaba, you source, you know, you put it in a a fulfillment center and you ship it out is they, the vast majority of them fail. And a lot of them don't even make money. There's lots of videos that you can find right now online of people trying to run Amazon FBA or courses that they've bought that explain to them how to make money off of a physical product on Amazon or Shopify or something like that. And they go through the entire thing and then they reveal their experience and they're like, I didn't make any money or I lost money, right? The vast majority of them don't work out. And on top of that, when you guys see that Zoom webinar that's on my uh, course lectures with Bobby, you're going to see exactly why it fails. And Amazon's a very, very difficult platform. You're basically Jeff Bezos, bitch. If something on that doesn't work out for them, then you're going to pay the consequences. Um, there's another guy that I know that, that publishes a lot of books. So he's got, I'm not going to give away the details because um, he wanted to keep it private, but he's got this niche. So let's call it, I don't know, basket weaving. He's got this basket weaving niche and he's got, thousands of books that he's published on the different colors of yarn, the type of yarn, the density of the yarn, the uh, weave patterns of the yarns. And it does very, very well. Um, But if for some reason they do an audit or they go and drill down through the uh, Audible store, which is on ACX, you know, for example, and they don't like something that you're doing with your business, they can actually hold back your revenues And he's seen certain, you know, scenarios where they've held back revenues for a prolonged period of time and he had to escalate and go through all stuff and hire lawyers to get the money out of it. So running businesses on somebody else's platform is leading yourself into a half business, right? Hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating. You have to be very, very careful. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did, consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line. Pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments, 
there's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code ALPHA10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis, and that gives you a little bit of a discount, and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.